Hey guys, Mal here. So I've been seeing a lot of new base designs popping up, both on YouTube and in game. A whole lot of them seem to be relying on the bunker thing, you know, the thing with the roofing. I guarantee you've seen one even if you didn't realise what it was at the time. Now it's fine if that is your sort of thing, but personally I need more space. I need more defence. I need it to be as painful and frustrating for those raiding bastards as possible. While bunker bases are cheap and fairly secure, they don't offer any of that. So instead of another bunker design, I'm going to show you what we use. Introducing the 3x3 from Hell. We have been using this design for close to a year. In that time, we have only been successfully raided twice once we were set up. We have had countless failed attempts both online and offline. This base is designed to be an absolute bastard to get into and a massive grind while you try and raid it. I want to point out straight away that this base is not designed for a solo player. It is doable and I have done it, but honestly it is no task for the faint hearted. This base is beefy and it requires an immense amount of work. For those that are more casual, I would recommend only attempting this in a small group of say 3 or more. Additionally, this base can be extended up by adding extra living space floors to accommodate more people. Without modifying this base from the exact design, I wouldn't have more than 4 people in it. Now let's take a look inside. As you can see there are 8 doors to choose from down here as well as an entrance up on the roof. Only 4 of these doors will actually lead into the base. The other 4 are all just full of doors and lead them straight back out the other side. If you get a group coming in to door raid you, they have a 50-50 chance of either going in the correct way or wasting a bunch of time and explosives on getting absolutely nowhere. At each of the four entrance areas, there is one door into the base and one straight through. If you are getting chased, you can duck into either of them for safety. If you end up in the straight through route, just keep going until you pop out the other end and jump into the next section as it will be the correct one. Once you're through all the doors, you end up in the first floor hallway. These garage doors can be left open while you are active. Just make sure you lock them down when you're not around or as soon as a raid attempt commences. Each of these rooms can be used for whatever you like. Personally, I like to keep these rooms to things that we use often, such as kits for going roaming, basically just high use and helpful things. I also like to dot RP rooms around the place, just to discourage raiders if they hit them. That being said, this room in particular does double as a fast and effective way to get your comfort to 100% and heal up. This is our way up, which leads to an identical floor, however rotated so that the hallway runs the opposite way to the first floor. Ideally you want to mix things up as much as possible. If you have 5 floors in a base that are identical, it makes it far too predictable and easy to raid. This floor is generally used for beds, storing more important things like gunpowder, scrap, etc, and crafting. Going up from there you reach a 4 directional airlock that opens into a shooting and viewing floor. Lastly, there is the roof. One of the great things about this design is that all of the rooms are modular, so you can swap out any of the rooms and have the layout completely different from what I've done here. We ran a number of tests and the fastest way in is 16 rockets right here. That being said, it only got us into two rooms, so from there it's still 8 doors for the first floor and another 8 doors for the second floor. Larger or very dedicated groups will be able to add another few floors of living space to this design. As well as giving you more space, it makes the base even more brutal to raid. Each floor is another 8 doors for them to get through if they want all of your loot. I'd recommend having a loot room on each floor of living space you have. Split your loot equally across these rooms. Make sure each floor has kits ready to go in case you need to be fully kitted immediately regardless of which floors you have access to. Now here's where our bases usually differ from a lot of others. Shotgun. Traps. Everywhere. A lot of people seem to underestimate and underuse the shotgun trap, which to me is absolutely insane. They only cost a bit of wood, metal frags, a couple of gears, and a few feet of rope. None of that is hard to get, and unlike other traps, the shotgun trap can be put in some very sneaky places. I'd recommend putting one shotgun trap in each of your rooms at the very least. Ideally though, you want to get as many of them down as you can. If you have a room with 3 to 5 traps, the raiders won't be able to peek or drain them without getting lit up. Additionally, they will have to shoot them all out to progress with the raid. This alone cripples and deters a lot of raiders. 
We actually had a group that offlined us, contact us to talk about how much of a pain in the ass it was for them. It took them hours to grind through the base and get past all of the traps. Now let's take a look at getting this thing built. Initially I was planning to run through building this base step by step, but honestly it's not an overly complicated build. It's a 3x3 with honeycombing. So instead, here is a sped up version of me building it, and while that rolls, I'm going to cover some handy tips when building a bigger base like this. Start by getting your foundations down, including the foundations for the honeycombing. You don't want to get halfway through your build and realize you don't have the room to honeycomb it fully. If you're on a busy server, once you know you have the room for your base, get a cupboard down and locked immediately. Once you have the initial 3x3 built and upgraded with airlocks, you can move over and start using this as your base. Just make sure you get the rest of it sorted ASAP as it is still very vulnerable without the extra floors and support. You want to get as much of the base built and sorted before anyone sees it. The less they know about the internal workings of the base, the better. This also applies when adding new floors. Build the external perimeter, then the roof, and then build the interior. The airlocks up top are optional, however they give you a heads up when people are coming in and they buy you a little more time to react rather than one explosion and they're in your shooting floor. We also decided to add shotgun traps to each gap around the roof. We had a prototype, but it could be drained too easily. Placing them like this means that they are going to take a hit if they try and ladder up that way and it is extremely hard to drain. If you don't have the resources to go straight to metal throughout the full base, you can just upgrade the foundations and floor to metal. Do the rest in stone and upgrade it later. Keep in mind that metal is far stronger than stone, so make sure you get this done ASAP. Speaking of the resources, here are the costs for building the base. This is just for the base. This does not cover filling it with everything as you most likely won't have all the blueprints yet. Substitute things when you hit a blueprint wall. Stairs instead of ladder hatches, double doors instead of garage doors, sleeping bags instead of beds. Just make sure you do get all those things sorted eventually. Metal base is priority one, and priority two is getting the shotgun trap BP and farming gears and rope for them. Get as many up as quickly as you can and get at least one full stack of handmade shells inside each one. Do not get lazy with this. If they find a way to drain a trap, you want it to take them a very long time. Rather than bore you guys with the fortify build, I thought I'd just include a link in the description so you can download and mess around with the build and fortify if you want to. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment. And if you want to see more of my content, make sure that you are subscribed and click the little bell so you don't miss any notifications. By the way guys, 349 subs when I last saw it. That shit is crazy. Thank you so much for all of the support. If there's anything you'd like to see me do, jump on my Discord and have a chat. I'm always open to new ideas and I'm around pretty regularly. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next video.